uh, overwhelming, I would also say that. Yeah, here is unexpected body changes during pregnancy. Like everything that has been or that has happened to my body until now, second trimester of pregnancy. A lot of changes, especially the fact that I'm pregnant for the first time. So just most of the things I didn't expect. It's weird though, because I feel like you have had maybe some stuff, but you never really paid attention because I was not pregnant before. Um, yeah, if you're curious about what changes actually your body goes through during pregnancy, I'll give you a bit of that from my experience. And I also want to hear from people, I think most of the people that are following us already have children, so to hear if you have experienced something similar or if you're pregnant at the moment, if you're also experiencing something similar, leave that in the comment below. Before I even took a, a test and, and you know discovered that I was pregnant, like a positive test, the nipple development is it, it's, it's ridiculous. Like, of course, I expected that my breasts were going to be larger in preparation for milk production. Amazing. I didn't expect that to happen really right away, but this was one of the first thing that happened. It's like breasts get really big and then they are they're kind of just swollen, they are painful. Like even if you just do this, they are painful. And then they are, um, I don't know, they are big, they are swollen, they are painful and they are increasing really in size very fast. So I would say the first trimester, before the, even the end of the first trimester, I already had to change my, my bra size and increase to a, like a size bigger than what I used to wear before. And I would say in the second trimester, moving to the third trimester, I see that I'm going to need to upgrade the bra size another time. And I, I would also expect that probably by the time I give birth and I start breastfeeding, I'll be like three times, you know, my boobs are probably going to be three times bigger than the way they were before. Second point, hyperpigmentation. Nipple are hyperpigmented at the moment. Like it's like somebody took charcoal and just add some shades to my nipples. I will show you just a before and after in a minute. No, I'm joking. I'm not going to show you my nipple. Now they are really disgusting. Maybe before I would show you, but now... Uh -oh. mm -mm. Mm -mm. I'm not even ready to show my body at the moment. Uh, yeah, but the nipples are very hyperpigmented. And that also something that takes place, or for me, it took place towards the end of the first trimester. They were really, like, after they were swollen, they were increasing. Then the next thing was this extreme hyperpigmentation. I'm not like a big person. I still wear small to medium. But... The lines around my neck now are very hyperpigmented. Like one day I just discovered, I was doing this to my neck and looking around and like, okay, that's weird. This is normal and Ali hasn't said anything, but I saw that the lines, I've noticed that my lines here, very hyperpigmented. I have also like a few dots here. I don't have any makeup foundation on at the moment. Like few, if I just have a pimple and I squeeze it, I get a lot of black patches, like uh, hyperpigmentation on my face as well, and they take, uh, they are not disappearing. Back in the day, I would just have a pimple, squeeze it, a week or two later, the thing is gone, but I still have the spots here, which are from, I don't know, three months ago. And I have a belly, like a, a piercing on my belly button. I was kind of planning to remove it, I haven't removed it yet. What I have seen when I try to remove it that the those holes now are super super hyperpigmented and they were not like that before. So back in the day I would remove it from time to time, it was just like normal skin. Now it's super hyperpigmented, and that's also one of the areas where I really see like hyperpigmentation. I'm just my ankles are swollen, my feet are also swollen, and I thought that is normal. Now there are also some 
areas that are swollen that I did not expect. I can't show you all the areas I'm talking about. But of course down there it's also swollen, like like puffy, swollen. Okay, I didn't ex I don't know. I did not expect that. Nobody, maybe those are just details that nobody ever told me before. I've always seen like, okay, the feet is normal, maybe the legs is normal, but now sometimes also the hands, I thought that's normal, but down there, I did not expect that. It's just like swollen. I don't know if it's swollen, if it's, I don't know, maybe because it's just the uterus growing and the cervix maybe moving down. Yeah, doesn't look cute at the moment. And then forming, this is something I didn't expect. And this is also something that started in the first trimester. When the boobs started enlarging, one of my armpit, I will show you in a minute. My armpit is swollen like crazy. First, when it started, I went to the doctor and I thought like, okay, maybe just the, you know, the immunity system because things are changing. And no, it was not like that. It's not painful or anything, but it's like, I have a tennis ball in my armpit. The, the line just between the belly button down to, <laughs> down to the VIP entrance. Let me put it that way. So this line here below the belly button is also become really hyperpigmented. And this is, we are in the second trimester of pregnancy and I expect it also to become more darker and probably and more enlarged going moving forward to, to the third trimester but I for the first when the first trimester went by I didn't notice any of that I was like okay good it's normal then out of the sudden I saw especially after the fifth month it just started appearing and yeah we have that so yeah I can't do nothing about it I just have I'm hoping though that it's going to disappear after I give birth. I think it's something to do with the uh, hormonal changes that leads to this hyperpigmentation and the formation of this line. But yeah, it's one of those things. You're pregnant and yeah, it appears. A rough skin uh, and f freckles appearing on my skin. And this is ridiculous because usually my skin is super smooth. I cream every day after the shower. Also, since I've been, like, since I'm pregnant also, every day in the morning when I wake up, even before I shower, I make sure, especially around on the tummy and then around the thighs, I cream, I cream with shea butter. If I have, don't have shea butter, I use, uh, like, uh, some body oils just to make sure that the skin is well and moisturized. Regardless of that, I still have like freckles, especially on my back. They just started appearing. So I was like telling Ali, okay, you have to check on my back if, if, if everything's fine. Because, okay. I was like, yeah, you have a couple of few spots. First, I thought were maybe pimples, but they're really freckles. Now, what I've also seen is that around also sometimes on the, on the nipples, like on the area, the dark area of the nipples, they also have just a little bit of freckles appearing, which is weird. I expected them at least on my face because in my family, my mom and some of my grandmothers have also a little bit of freckles on their face. So I thought maybe face around the neck, but I didn't get them here. I got them all around here and then a lot on my back and somewhere on the back and then also on the back of the neck, neck here. Oh yeah, the next point, this could be viewed by most people as positive, hair growth promotion. I would say, also when I did the hair video a few months ago, everybody was like, yeah, pregnancy, pregnancy. So when I, like, let me say, towards the end of the first trimester, I have noticed that my hair are growing like crazy. Now, if this was... Two years ago when I just had just got my hair and I wanted my hair to grow back in a week or so I would be very happy right right now it's not helping so much on my hair it's not a huge thing my hair is already thick a little bit of growth is good and I don't mind so much because I can easily cut the hair on my head you get what I'm trying to say I can cut my hair by myself here anytime but this hair growth is not only on my head is also intimate area, legs. I don't have a lot of hair on my arm, but also on my legs. 
an intimate area in around the stomach. What does that mean? I need to shave, especially my legs, I would say maybe twice every month. Legs are not a problem, but an intimate area for me is a problem because it also means I need to wax or epilate more. Back in the days, I would epilate myself twice every month. With this hair growth I've noticed, I need to wax or epilate once every week. That's a little more than I used to do before. And when I have this much hair grown, like a hair growth, I notice that I have a lot more ingrown hair, especially under my armpits or intimate, you know, everything intimate. A lot of more ingrown hair. And the, I think the problem here, especially when you're pregnant and you have a lot of hair growing in your intimate area, I cannot, I can barely see my, you know, below there. So I'm also not able to wax or to epilate apart from my armpits. And we're in quarantine. Everything is closed. So, yeah. Next point is, I think everybody, you know, if you, with pregnancy, obviously, the most obvious change is a body weight, increase in body weight, but everybody also expect with that, of course, cellulite. I have had a bit of cellulite before on my butt. What I've noticed since I've been pregnant, they just be getting a little bit more enlarged. That's what I've noticed, but I think it's because probably the body is also increasing. I'm gaining weight, obviously, and that brings us to the next point, which is gaining weight during the second trimester is scary. <sighs> I had already gained about, I don't know, 5 to 10 kilos after, like, after the first lockdown. I was not even pregnant, it's just because I was not going anywhere, maybe we were eating a little bit more at home. And I was already a little stressed about it. Then I discovered that I'm pregnant. And I was at that weight for maybe three months. And then boom, poof, like the fifth month came. The tummy is increasing. And then I just see the numbers are increasing. And I'm asking my doctor, is that okay? And she's like, yeah, it's normal. You're still within, you know, you should be somewhere between, you expect at least 10 to 15 kilos weight gain during pregnancy, but that just, it is scary. It just, ah, ah. you know, you're just hoping that you're going to lose it afterward, but yeah. With time, first few weeks, I was like, okay, in the first months, I was like, okay, it's a little bit stressful or whatsoever, but with, at this stage, I'm more focused on just feeling well, feeling healthy, my mental, state of mind is amazing considering that we are also in lockdown and yeah i'm trying to eat healthy but i think at this stage this i don't think this has much to do with eating it also probably the fluid the amniotic fluid is increasing then you have obviously your breast increasing and you cannot escape weight gains and you can't really control how yeah of course eat less like focus on eating healthy instead of eating more but i think you don't have so much control because but you know women are different and each person experience this differently in the game maybe some gain 10 which is the minimum which is good and maybe some gain 15 and you just you know just have to wait and see but yeah something that i really enjoyed this i enjoyed especially in the first i think it started when i was like nine weeks pregnant my skin was glowing like I just it's like you have used I don't doses of vitamin C 20 all the time it was just shining all the time I really I do enjoy that and that is one of the few positive things that I really I, I just I love that I do love that and I think I'm wondering what would happen if after giving birth how fast is this going to disappear and how am I going to try to, what am I going to use to try to make sure that my skin still remain, especially the face, the, the, the skin on my face remain, you know, like with this brightness. It's, for the first time, I think I understood what it means when they say 
a product is for skin brightening and now we're not talking about bleaching but it just your skin glows in a different way when you're pregnant i have a feeling that has to do with um prenatal like this uh what are they called the the vitamins that you're taking during pregnancy and also then your hormonal changes because in the vitamins what i've seen like in the vitamins that i'm taking there are also a couple of ingredients that are usually in the product that i would buy a serum for my face but in higher concentration so i think that also contribute to a healthier skin and the glow that you observe on my face what i've noticed though is that if i'm just cleaning my gum like flossing things that i used to do before i i do bleed a lot more like simple floss i start bleeding and i feel like i'm bleeding way way more than i should ever, should ever, I have ever experienced just by frosting and sometimes if I just squeeze a pimple also just I saw that I'm bleeding a lot I think just because of course now I have also I'm drinking like two liters of water eating a whole lot of spinach and I have obviously a baby I have a large blood volume uh, it, it could also be because we have been I mean it's almost a year or a year already always in this um show social distancing lockdown quarantine all sort of thing related to covid so i'm not last year i went to the dentist only once and i tried to keep my gums and my dental as clean as healthy as possible by just using home remedies like teeth cleaning with the baking powder lemon or this home remedy recipes I'm trying, especially when I'm pregnant, to avoid going to the dentist unless if I really feel it's necessary. That could be the reason why I'm bleeding a little bit more than usual. Pretty much it. If you enjoyed this video, give us a like, subscribe to our channel, and see you in our next video. Ciao, ciao, ciao.